So I was saying that after discussing lab five with you, uh, we need to start lab seven immediately. It's a very easy lab. It will be introductory for the course. Uh, and we'll see how things would go. Hopefully, uh, starting if next Monday I would go to campus, probably I would give the live session from the lab directly. So I can record lab four immediately and start giving you the session afterwards. We'll see how things would go. I cannot tell what tomorrow will uh, give us, but let's plan to have something interesting. Okay. Uh, the midterm is going to be lab one, two, three, five, only four experiments in this order. Lab, no, no, not all this, not all this. So I'm going to say for the midterm, you have lab one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, five, only four. Even if we're going to do like seven labs, you will only be given the first four. Okay. And this is a rule that would apply to all the sections in B+. Plus. Okay, uh, is there anything I forgot? I think we're ready to start. Yeah, okay. Ahmad, you can start with your question. Yes, Dr. Uh, so before you start, Hello, sir. let me remind yes. everybody, please turn on, turn on your camera if you can for at least 10 minutes. I need to see you. Yes, Ahmad, go ahead. All right. You're asking me about the slope. And when you calculate the slope, you're asking if you need to explain how you got it. Is that your question? Yes, doctor. All right. So basically, just tell me what is the method used. You can simply say, I use the calculator to find the slope. Or you can tell me, I used Excel. And basically, it will show because you will take a screenshot of your work to include in your lab report. Right? Yes, doctor. I was Hey, of course, you simply put the X and Y on your Excel, select, uh, enter the chart, and that's it. And let's do that for the midterm as well. It takes a second. Okay, so the line is the function. You can use it anytime yes. you want to find the error on the slope. If you know how to use it, uh, it's great. If you don't know how to use it, I advise you to learn how to use it because it's so quick. If you need me to teach you yes. how to use it, let me know. All right, I uh, advise everybody to try it. And whenever you're stuck, let me know, okay? Okay. Yes, Don't ask uh, your partner doctor, to do it for you. Learn how to do it yourself because it's gonna save you a lot of time in the midterm. Why not use it? And you simply tell me in the lab report I use the linest function to uh, to find the error on the slope, and this is the error. By the way, you reminded me of something very important, Imad. Uh, now that I'm correcting lab two, I'm finding the. Uh, uh, some mistakes here and there. If you believe you did the same mistake in lab three, you're most welcome to submit again. So let's say now you're submitting lab five and you realized after a week that you did something wrong. Submit again, it's okay. The deadline is not a rigid deadline. This is not an exam. It's simply a simple assignment. So as I'm correcting your lab reports and you realize you did the same mistake in the next one, submit again. So I usually correct only the last submission mission you have, okay? I don't look into the previous ones. Continue, Aymat. Yes, Dr. My second question was just to focus on the lab report. Do you think that the first thing is to do the plot? And do you think that you include in your regard the error bars of your quantities? So I think the error bars of your quantities. Wait, where are error bars? I wrote error bars. Yes, yes, doctor. The answer question tahad. Okay, one second. Lab five, right? Okay. Yes. Hey, the Akit had a kataba on a mashifta. 
By the way, this draft is written by me, not by any other instructor. Okay, show me. So, because I never taught you how to do error bars. Okay, yes, Dr. Ma, I hear. Increase oh, your graph, the error bars of your quantities. Mark, I did not see it to, to change it or to discuss it. How about we say this is optional? If you know how to do it, it's nice to see. Otherwise, just uh, ignore it. I never taught you how to do this. So. All right. Oh, doctor, but uh, every question, but how is all this process in mid year? And what type of questions in the scene we have to expect in the mid year? Okay. okay, for the midterm, by the way, the date is a tentative still on the 20, and the time is not clear yet, probably 10 a.m. I'm still waiting other sections to confirm into section to confirm so far. So by the way, do you mind uh, 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 Saturday 20 at 10 a.m. Let me know later uh, because I'm still waiting for the others to confirm. In midterm, what do you expect? Most probably it's going to all be uh, multiple choice. Okay, most probably. There's a 10% chance that we give you a part multiple choice and a part subjective where you have a tiny problem to solve. And the tiny problem to solve is basically a tiny lab report to, to solve, which is we give you the results, we ask you to plot, we ask you to find the slope, we ask you to do some analysis, percentage differences, compare, list the sources of errors and so on. After we give you the, a picture of the setup and we give you how the procedure is, but it's something really tiny, like 20 minutes or so, all right? But by the time of the midterm, I should be able to tell you if it's gonna be subjective or multiple choice or both or only one type, okay? Uh, you will be asked a lot about data analysis. So expect a lot of questions related to uh, average, RMS, slope, error on the slope, propagation of error, all that, along with conceptual questions related to how acceleration depends on the angle and so on. Not a lot of problems to solve because the problems should be for the course and not for the lab. Like I will not give you a problem where you have numerical values and a solution to provide, okay? Yes, Dr. Mercy. Okay. Uh, um, we'll be with Jane in a moment. Let me uh, check Fadi's uh, question first, Jane. We only include the graph or do we include a screenshot of the linest and the entire table? Uh, listen, if they want you to plot, you take a screenshot of the plot. If they want you to find the slope, uh, you can say, I took it from Excel. Or you can, why not show a screenshot of your work? Usually, if I uh, would want to write a lab report, I would want to show the work I did. It's a lot of work. Why hide it? It's your lab report, you know? You have the right to do anything you want with it as long as it's neat and I can read it. I only included the graph, but mentioned I used the Linus method. If you did not show me your work, it's okay, as long as you explain how. But if you did all the work, why not show it, Fadi? Don't hide it, it's nice to keep, all right? I call it, it's like literature, literature review or part of what you did. All right, Tiara is asking about the error bars. I assume I answered the question. If it's times, Baleha, what do you mean by timed? For the error bars, you mean uh, the, uh, the midterm? No error bars in the midterms, for sure. All right, but listen, it will not be like basically you would need to discuss stuff, not type a lot of equations, no but probably you need to type some, or probably we give you the option to write your answer on a paper and send a scanned copy of your work. So, Barkin. Yes, it's a paper as but it's an exam, yeah. But Zakar, two semesters ago, this is what they did. But uh, al Excel, you do it on Excel, which means, which means you open a Word document like the one I have here. Uh, Everything Excel, Kazab Tamli screenshot, uh, copy paste on the document. Can she write on a paper? You write it on a paper, take a picture, come in on the document. So everything will be on one document PDF. But Tamli, cut and paste your Excel, your handwriting, everything on top. Akid, what about? All right. So I think it's the fastest way. Yes, uh, we need to use respondents. That's uh, really true. Okay. Uh, yes, Ms. I Doctor. I just thought it would be messy or because uh, it's just random numbers on Excel. 
uh, it's okay, Fadi. Uh, 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 train yourself to have a clear Excel. Like remember when I gave you a very small example of X and Y values, I wrote X and Y and trust me, I do it for me. If it's messy for people, it's gonna be messy for you. So if it's clear for you, it's better. It's a good habit. Okay, and I use a lot of colors for myself, not for people. Okay, uh, we cannot use responsive. All right. Oh. All right, I'm gonna look into this issue, Aymad. You cannot use responses and Excel at the same time. Thank you for reminding me. I will let you, I will get back to you for that. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna check with other instructors and see what the solution is for this one. Okay, okay, so Excel and responses cannot be used together. You're totally right. Let me find a solution, okay? Other than that, can I ask Jane to speak up? Jane, hello? Yes, Jane, hi. Yes. Uh, doctor, I just wanted to ask about the, the error bars again. Um, and I use uh, Google Sheets because uh, I find it, you know, easier. But in Google Sheets, we have this option where we can just add the error bars by just like asking for it, basically. Yeah, and I so, think Excel too. Excel is very similar. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not very familiar with Excel, but you no, know, that's all. That's all what you meant in the question, or yes, do we yes. have to do any kind? No, 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 no. This is all I meant. But I thought probably some of you never tried this. That's why I was like, it's optional if you want to. It's nice to have. It's nice to keep. But since yeah, we're not okay. using them in our analysis later on, uh, no need to include them. All right. Sometimes if you go back to IB, and this is, I think, where you trained yourself to do it, they use the error bars to find the error on the slope because they find yeah. the slope and then the margins, you know. But here you're finding the error on the slope using a different methods, which means the error bars are not really used. They're nice to look at though, because they give you an idea of the error for different values, uh, which means that's why I wanted to I want to keep it as <laughs> and one shot and let's wait a second because uh, all right i'm all over the place because my zoom is signing in i'm sharing my screen so you will see my mess okay it's still recording i just need to click share screen i think okay all is well yes now let me check the chats i learned not to do anything when i get disconnected it was an electricity cut so i learned to wait I used to close everything. So we were discussing Respondus and Excel. All right, it's like I need a bigger window. Sorry if I'm slow today. Okay. Stop typing because I'm still scrolling up. Okay, I should use two hands. All right, so. When is the physics midterm? Okay, March 20, it's still tentative. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna email you today to tell you that March 20 is a tentative day to, to, for you to give me your final approval, all right? To make it official, okay? Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm still with Jane and then with Ali, if I'm not wrong. All right, Jane, the floor is yours. Say it again. I'm preparing a white uh, Yes. Yes, Dr. Anna, we have one more question. Uh, if you, if we look at part A, question one, uh, I told you last time that they were repetitive questions. So do we answer them twice? Well, uh, if you believe twice. the same answer is uh, like, for example, which one? Number four? Um, part, I think it's part B, uh, question one and question three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so basically you would see, 
all right, be careful. When you're greater than 10 degrees and less than 10 degrees, probably you will find a slight difference. If you believe that there is no slight difference between question one and question three, between the answer of question one and question three, say it, all right, no problem. All right. But the reason why we gave you this question repetitive, because when you have amplitudes less than 10 degrees, this is considered simple harmonic motion. However, when you have amplitude greater than 10 degrees, it's no more considered simple harmonic motion. And the period to be equal to 2 pi radical L over G is no more applicable. However, it's very close to the real value. You see, that's why we're yeah. asking again and again. Okay, Dean. Oh, uh, Doctor, this is the question that Eli asked as well. I have the same doubt uh, in, in part P question two. Uh, we were asked to find the root mean square. Oh, comment, you know, comment about what? Okay, uh, usually when you find the root mean square, if the root mean square is big compared to the period, you can discuss precision, for example. Oh, okay. I'm thinking what else you can comment. Um, Probably, so they have different trials and different angles. Uh, you already commented on the effect of amplitude on the period. So there's nothing to comment but the precision. Yes, I think the precision. Yes. Uh, so can you repeat what you said? So we All comment right, on so, the precision. Okay, let me remind you something. Uh, how do we discuss, and I'm not sure everybody knows this. To discuss accuracy, you find the percentage difference, right? And you see if the percentage difference is less, what just happened, less than than 5%, right? Am I typing what just happened? Okay, less than 5%, okay? Uh, for precision, you don't look for percentage difference, but you look for the ratio uh, error divided by the value. And if it's less than, if it's less than 2%, you say precise, all right? So it's the ratio of any error, the uncertainty over the value. Like for example here, the uncertainty is the root mean square and the value is the average. Let's say I give you any value, for example, mass to be equal to 51.2 kilograms plus or minus, um, what's that, Jesse? Plus or minus 0 0.1 kilograms. For you to know if this value is precise or not, you see the uncertainty, is it? a big part of your measured value, irrespective of what is this value, if it's one measurement or average or calculated or probably a slope, you know, you simply say 0 0.1 divided by 51.2 and then multiply by 100 and check, is it less than 2%? If it's less than 2%, you can say it is precise, all right? Accuracy, however, is comparing your experimental to the theoretical, so two different things. Okay, comparing okay. them to see if it's accurate. Accurate by definition is how close it is to the real value or to the theoretical or to the reference. Okay. Okay, thanks. I think I answered your question, Ellie. Am I right? Yes, I'm waiting to hear from Ellie. So people, you are more than welcome to submit your work again if you believe you can improve or add something, no problem at all. I have other students who did five submissions so far. Trust me, I'm, trust me, I'm going to ignore them all and correct the last one, okay? Let me give you a chance to improve your work. Yes, I think on Wednesday. Do you want me to check? I think the best uh, tool to check is to check the announcement or your email. Yes, Eli, can we please discuss the last couple of questions? Let's see, last couple of questions. I love those. Plot T squared versus mass. I suppose you know how to do that. This juice from the slope, the stiffness constant. I think uh, you will have only three points on your graph and the variable is the mass. So if you plot T squared versus M, the slope is gonna be four pi squared over K. And please uh, stop me if you have a question. Uh, then uh, deduce the stiffness, you can do that. You need to find the error on the slope to be able to find the error on K by doing propagation of error. So this question is a bit long and this explains the extra points on it. If you set a mass into vibration and time, the first 10 oscillation, then 20 oscillation, then 40 oscillation, what can you conclude about the effect of amplitude and damping? You need to discuss damping here. Like through the first five oscillations, 
you're gonna see less damping through the 10 and then 20 and then 40. You can discuss the fact that probably it's gonna stop and the amplitude is gonna get lower and lower with the time. Sketch on the same graph, the displacement versus time with and without damping, you're gonna have something like that. So without damping, you have this. With damping, you're gonna have this, then less, then less, then less, then less, depending on how strong the damping is. So excuse my graphs, let me draw something better. So no damping, the amplitude is gonna be constant. And yes, when they say sketch, you can use a pencil and this is again with damping. Let's say the first one is going to be normal and the second one you start losing energy, then more energy, then more energy, then nothing. Okay, you can discuss the period that we can call pseudo period now and so on. Did I answer your question, Eli? Hey, mother, no problem at all. If you need to submit later than the deadline, just let me know. So I can take note of it and no points will be deducted, especially if you have a reason. And even if the reason is a regular reason, we're a human and this is an assignment that it's okay. Sometimes I lay, I'm late correcting your lab report because I would have something in like else, like an emergency. All right, so back to Jane, would you mind discussing part C question five? Of course. Part C question five, to increase the frequency of a simple pendulum, one must. So you need to, this is a multiple choice question, pick one answer and explain. Decrease the length, increase the initial speed, what's not clear about it? The length, meaning the length of the pendulum. Initial speed, when you release the pendulum, you can release it without initial speed or you can give it a push. The amplitude is the angle. The mass of the pendulum is known. What do you want me to explain? To give you a hint, for example, All right, probably I can tell you that frequency is one over period. It's the inverse of the period. And you know the equation of a period, right? And this would tells you everything you want. I cannot give you the answer because I would want somebody else to grade you then. But I can give you the method and I can give you a hint. All right, Jane, do you think my hint is enough? Let me say it again. Frequency is one over period. And you have the equation for a period of a simple pendulum. However, the equation is only applicable for angles smaller than 10 degrees. You can discuss that in your explanation. All right? So Yes, doctor. Yeah. Thank and you're you. lucky you have the explain part because the explain part will give you a chance to pick probably two answers. Okay? While you explain it or probably pick an answer different than your friends, but while explaining it you can convince me. So when you have explain I'm not gonna look at your answer. I'm gonna look at your explanation. Usually when you don't have explain, it's either white or black or A or B or C or D, you know? All right, more questions, please. Yeah. No one? We're starting the new experiment. All right. Um, the experiment is this one. Let me start with this one. Uh, I offered lab seven back in the spring of 2020, which was at the beginning of uh, COVID-19. Um, and this is where we were not allowed to go to the lab. That's why I don't have a video of the experiment. And this is the reason why, by the way, we don't have enough videos of lab four because the last time we offered lab four, we were on campus, like that's why it's not recorded from the full. Lab six as well, all right? Although lab six is recorded by other instructors and uh, I would want to do it myself. Now for lab seven, I remember I gave this video to my other students. This is done by two very funny guys from PASCO. PASCO are the equipment we use. So this is delivered by PASCO. I would say this is like official video for the experiment. Although the procedure they followed is a bit different, but I can explain it like fast forward through the YouTube. How about I put it ready? How can I select? Yes. How about I put it ready for us so we can watch it later? However, I need to tell you that Dr. Samar already did an experiment and we can use it as well. 
I'm gonna, I'm just gonna click both. Just let me think, let me see if the video is still on and okay, I'm gonna click both. So we have two videos we can scroll through. Probably I can share both with you. All right, but before discussing that, let me tell you what to expect from the theory. First of all, you need to know that this lab is very easy. You will only be asked to plot and do the slope. No difficult linear regression to do. That's for the data analysis. Now for the physics, it's gonna be a bit tough if you don't know what buoyant force is, but then if I give you a good reminder from middle and high school, you're gonna be okay. And it's a very short experiment, okay? So let me start by discussing the setup. Yes. Um, all right. So basically you have a stand. Let me use a pen. This is a stand that you're supposed to build yourself. And then you have something here called, by the way, why do I have two pictures on top? This is only one picture. Weird. All right. So I was saying that you have a force sensor. This is a force sensor. Just let me check. Is it really one picture? All right. And you can, you have a cylinder, okay? Like a, any cylinder, you have a beaker filled with water. You make sure the beaker is clean and the water is tap water, although you know tap water is not distilled water. And by this device, you can change the level of the beaker by lowering the beaker and hiring the beaker as much as you want. I'm gonna use a ruler in here that I can, that has a support. So the ruler would be standing on the table. I can use any pencil that is very sharp to know the level of my beaker. And let's say, and I would move the beaker in such a way or probably the cylinder in such a way for the cylinder to be just touching the water, just touching the water, which means not sinking inside the liquid, just touching the liquid, all right? I'm discussing the procedure now. I would definitely measure the weight of the cylinder outside water. I will call it W0. It's the weight of the cylinder. The unit will be Newton, something Newton. And then I will put my cylinder just grazing the surface of the water. Uh, and this is where my experiment is ready to start. I'm gonna set this measurement to zero or whatever measurements you have will be your reference. Now your job is to lo lower the cylinder inside the water one centimeter at a time or half a centimeter at a time, depending on the procedure. And for you to be able to do so, you have two methods, either lower the cylinder half a centimeter at a time or simply lifting using this device your beaker half a centimeter at a time. And since you have a ruler, you can measure when you have 0 0.5 centimeter to start taking measurements. And then when the beaker will be as high as one centimeter. So if the beaker is higher by one centimeter, it means the depth of your cylinder is one centimeter. This is a force sensor that we never used before. The force sensor is not user friendly. And uh, usually I take a lot of precautions handling it. One, you need to zero it every time you need to take a measurement. So for this experiment, you zero it at the beginning of the measurements and you take all the measurements in one shot, like later on. Also, it needs calibration because it does not measure newtons. It measures voltage. What does it mean when it measures voltage? It measure, it has a capacitors inside. So your job before, actually my job is before you come to the lab, I need to give the force sensor a known weight, a known mass and do M, e, M times G. So which means a known weight. I'm gonna measure the voltage. I'm gonna enter into the setup of data studio and write this volts is equivalent to this Newtons. Since it's a linear device, it would know that double the voltage would be the double the Newtons, you know? So calibration must be done every time I need to use a force sensor. Calibration should be done once at the beginning of the experiment, but zeroing should be done. It has like a knob in here where it's written tear, the tear button. You click on it to zero your measurement before you start doing any measurement for every trial, okay? Now, before I discuss the setup and the procedure again, let me discuss the buoyant force in general and probably ask you, how do you define a buoyant force? Please go ahead.
Yes, how do you define a buoyant force? Anyone? It's the Archimedes up thrust, yes. What does it do? What is it related to? How do you find it? It's due to what? Yes, Jane. If I'm not mistaken, it's basically um, like the normal, but in water or in fluids. Okay. So it's the one that poses the um, it poses the weight of any object that is in water or in any other fluid. Okay, so Priscilla is saying any fluid, so it could be in a gas as well. Uh, in which case an object would float, and in which case an object would sink. It has to do with the density of water. Yes, it is related to the density of the water. Yes, what else can you tell or remember? I would say you have an object floating if the weight and the buoyant force are equal and opposite where you have equilibrium. An object would sink whenever the weight is greater than the buoyant force and therefore you do not have equilibrium. To remind you, the buoyant force is actually equal to rho or the density of the fluid, I'm gonna say liquid in our case, times the gravity, which will be taken to be 9.8, times the depth, how can I call it? I'm gonna call it the height, or the height of the solid under the water, it's basically the depth, okay? So, yes, 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 yeah, I'm thinking. All right, what else? All right, so let me see what we can do. What we can measure here, all right, I'm gonna ask you, what do you think the force sensor will actually measure when the liquid is inside the water? The weight of the water. Okay, I just made a mistake and I was wondering what's wrong with my equation, Wait, one second. So this is not the height, it's the volume. It is the volume, yes. Um, so this is the volume that is under the liquid. Otherwise, your equation will not be in Newton. So let me say it again. V immersed is the volume under the water, which means if I have a cylinder as such, and this is the water, I mean a beaker, and you have a water, and let's say this is the cylinder that is partially immersed. V immersed is only the part under the water, all right? So this is V and not the height. And then I'm gonna say the question again, and please answer back because I did not hear you well. So what does the force sensor measure when the solid is inside the water? It does uh, not the measure the volume. It measures the weight of who? Of the solid inside. Okay, so is it the real weight? Uh, the weight in water, so the weight my buoyant force. In total, is about the force. Okay, so I'm gonna say the force sensor. I'm gonna call it like this: the force sensor uh, measures the real weight of the object of the object if the object is outside the liquid. If the object is outside the liquid, the liquid, right? If the object is inside the liquid, so if the object is inside the liquid, the uh, force sensor, the force sensor is going to measure not the real weight, the apparent weight, okay? Which is not the real weight. All right, which is not the real weight. All right, here I'm gonna write an equation that states that the apparent weight, and it's basically your idea, the apparent weight is the real weight minus the Archimedes. So the apparent weight is the real weight, okay, minus the upthrust. Or if you want, the upthrust is the difference between the real weight and the apparent weight, okay? Be, keep that in mind. All right, now if I go back to this slide, it shows you that the force is density times rho times V immersed. And it explains what is V immersed exactly. Before I continue, what is V of a cylinder? Can you please help? Yes, V of a cylinder. How do you find V of a cylinder? It's easy. Can I say it's the area? of the cylinder of the base times the height, which is pi r squared times height. Yes, Fed, yes, Jane, yes, 
L, yes, Christy, yes, everyone. So it's pi r squared and r is the radius of the base times height, all right? Which means this equation can be written a bit differently. It's gonna be the buoyant force to be the density of the liquid times uh, G and times pi r squared and times the height. And what I mean the height, the depth under the water, all right? So your job is to vary the depth and as you can see, I'm simply changing the height of the beaker, which makes your cylinder to go deeper and deeper inside the water. Yes. So by changing uh, slowly the height of uh, the beaker or the depth of immersion, by the way, this is the height I'm talking about, the part is, that is underwater, you're going to measure the apparent weight and deduce the buoyant force for each and every height. Now I will plot F versus H. My question for Christy is, Christy, do you get a linear relationship? Yes or no? Yes. And what does the slope represent? A D times G times P times R square. Okay. Knowing that all these are constant and given, G is given, and the radius of the cylinder will be measured, uh, to, will be measured and given to you, you can deduce from the slope the density of the liquid. Now we know that density of distilled water is how much? One. One gram per milliliter, thank you, Christy. So it's gonna be 1000 kilogram per meter cubed. I'm just assuming SI units. You should get something close, but not the same due to the fact that you're dealing with tap water full with impurities. Usually I ask the students to go to the bathroom, to the boys room actually, because it's the closest to the lab to wash the cylinder well, because probably it has salt in it from previous experiments and to put water from the tap water and they get something like 1,200 kilogram per meter cubed, which is close enough probably to 1,000. So experiment is very easy. Let me say it again. You measure the weight outside the water. And by the way, this is the table. I'm glad to see it. The depth, you start with zero depths. This is where you can find the real weight of the object. The buoyant force is whatever you read minus the real weight, okay? So you can do real weight minus apparent weight to find the buoyant force, okay? Depending on what measurements I give you. Probably I'm gonna give you the, bio, the buoyant force directly or probably the apparent weight, be careful. And then you can plot easily the buoyant force versus, versus the depth, find the slope doing linear regression and then deduce the density of the liquid. Liquid one is tap water, liquid two you're gonna add a lot of salt, probably like 200 grams of salt. And you're gonna stir the liquid for five minutes and not everything is gonna get dissolved. The point is to increase the density a lot so you can see a slight increase in the slope. It's a nice experiment because it's easy and you can see results. Usually, this is some results I got from previous students. So tap water. By the way, uh, this is not the diameter of the disc. I meant the diameter of the cylinder or the base of the cylinder. I called it a disc. These are measurements done by my students. And as you can see, the lower, the bigger the depth or the, the more you lower the cylinder inside the liquid, it's going to weigh less and less and less. You can assume this to be a real weight because it's still outside the water. So you do this minus that to get the buoyant force. Then this minus this to get the buoyant force. Then this minus the real weight or real weight minus the appearance. Uh, the buoyant force is zero when you're outside the liquid and so on. Very easy to plot. You should notice that the buoyant force is greater in the salty water because the density is greater apparently. Are you gonna use this results? I don't know, I will let you know. Probably I'm gonna give you some different results. Now let me see if I can go through uh, the, the experiments a bit. Probably not. Uh, for uh, Dr. Summer's experiment, she's explaining a bit how the force sensor is functioning. And this is, I believe, your only chance to play around with the force sensor. And this is the tear button where you can zero your instrument. I know you can watch this later. I wanna show you the cylinder a bit. This is a cylinder. I mean the beaker with the water inside. 
this is the cylinder you will uh, you can attach the cylinder to uh, to a wire and then the wire to the hook of the force sensor data studio will give you nothing simply a digital measurement of the appearance it depends if you zero the instrument without the weight it's going to give you the real weight the apparent weight some of the students and some of the instructors would zero with the weight on so they measure only the buoyant force okay depending on what's given to you don't worry you see two decimals this is a digital measuring tool what else let me see if there's something interesting for you to see with me now or you can watch the video later i want to show you probably how she is increasing the height what's that let me see all right she's taking some values probably we can use her values or not i will let you know what kind of values to use probably she's gonna show you how she's taking the diameter of this one using a vernier caliper um yes uh, and she's also explaining if i'm not wrong the the, the theory again all right so I don't know if we will be able, okay, this is what an example of the measurement. Let's see if I can wait for this. Otherwise I would give you the link. So negative, if I'm not wrong, means simply an upward force, okay? So, and probably this is the buoyant force that because I believe she zeroed the, the instrument while the weight is on. So what she's measuring is the buoyant force without anything extra. And I would want to show you how she's lowering the thing inside the liquid. Okay, it's nice to hear the, all right. So this is barely touching the surface. So I can see this is the real weight because it's not immersed yet. And how does she immerse it? She's gonna show you. Yeah, the only way to fast forward is to download. Okay, let me, all right. While waiting for the instrument to go down, let me see, those boys are nice to watch and they're using the same equipment, but the experiment is a bit different. So this is the cylinder. It's been lowered inside a, a beaker, but the beaker has an opening and what they're taking is the extra liquid, all right? I don't want you to use this experiment as your reference. It's only extra, and I'm gonna call it extra experiment to watch, to have an idea how things work, okay? But don't use it for your lab report. I want you to use LAU official for the lab report and not PASCO. But this is, since this is delivered by PASCO, I thought it will be good to watch, to have a, a, a global understanding of what's happening, okay? So I don't think, let me just see, Okay, so I don't think it's smart to scroll through the video. Okay, this is the ruler she's using. I don't know if she's holding it by her hand or simply using a device to keep it con like standing and to measure the height, all right? And she's taking the measurements again, all right. So how about I stop scrolling through the videos and uh, give you both links, okay? I'm sorry for this, by the way, this is not my channel. It's the channel of LAU. So I don't know who's watching those. My channel, I don't watch this and I hate it. All right. So, yes, yeah, so that's it. Um, let me show you a quick look on the lab report for you to know what to expect. Yes, Andrew. Uh, my kids love it though. Probably that's why I hate it because I have it on all day. Okay. Apparently you like it, huh? Probably it's interesting and I'm underestimating it, right? Okay. <laughs> How about all kids do the same thing? All right, so they give you a quick uh, uh, briefing of the theory. This is an excellent picture of the setup. I love this picture more than what we have on the PowerPoint. A stand, a force sensor, clear beaker, uh, yes. This says they're explaining how to do the experiments. You simply, yeah, the procedure here is very clear. I urge you to, to read it quickly to understand what you need to do. The what do you think question you answer before looking at your ex, uh, values, like in general, the table will be given to you. Your job is to explain what to do, plot, calculate the slope and the error on the slope, deduce the dense value of the density and the error on it, Discuss precision accuracy, sources of errors, 
density of salty water compare that's it so the lab report is only one page how cool is that okay yes it's an easy lab report watch the videos and try to organize yourself through it give me a few hours so i can provide you with reasonable results for you not to be confused all right any questions before i leave you All right, let me know throughout the week if you have questions. Thank you for, um, I'm glad we did not miss today because we're gonna, pay, we're gonna pay for it later if we skip one session. Thank you so much, Priscilla, same to you. Uh, thank you so much. I'm gonna st stop recording and stay here.